these are the five best e-ink tablets that you can buy in 2022. This is a bit of an update video because I did one earlier on in the year, five best e-readers that you can buy. I thought this time I would give you, well, if there's any changes since then, and also a little bit more depth into each of these e-readers. These note-taking e-readers are amazing. I think we need to change the way that we're thinking about tech and see devices like these e-ink tablets as fitting in somewhere that an iPad doesn't fit or a laptop doesn't fit. There are spaces for your thoughts. This time, I'm gonna give you a little bit more detail into my evaluations of these. Since making that first top five video, has my list changed? Is the big me getting in? Will there be any space for the Note Air 2 or the Remarkable 2? And has the Quirk Logic paper actually been bumped? What about the coloring screens? Has that changed my list? And the Nova Air C, is there room for that? I'm gonna limit myself in this list to ones that I've actually tried. And so you won't find the MatePad paper, the Huawei, in this list. And Huawei, if you're listening, lots of people think that it could make this list, so please do send me one. I want to also let you know that I have now written reviews on my website, evaluateeverything.co.uk. And on there, you can find all of these details. And now I've included a comparison table on there to show you exactly what I think against all of these categories for each of these devices that I've tried. I'm gonna go in reverse order from five to one, but first I'm gonna tell you why some have actually fallen off this list or didn't quite make it this time. The Quirk Logic Paper has been bumped. There is nothing wrong with this device, but we are close to the Paper 2. And that will make very many important improvements. For instance, we won't have this battery powered stylus anymore. We're gonna get a faster device using their amazing software. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you buy the original Quirk Logic Paper right now, unless you really know that you need an A4 size device and you want to look out for the best deal. In fact, there is nothing wrong with this device. It's still a really excellent device and they're heavily discounting it because it's not too distant future where we'll have the Quirk Logic Paper 2. You can't really get an A4 screen right now at a cheaper price. Watch this space for the Paper 2. The Nova Air C, which this is the Nova Air, isn't in this list. And the reason for that is because I haven't had one to try. I'm almost certain that it would be, by the way, because the Nova Air is an excellent device and I'm sure that having a color ink screen on this device would make it quite frankly excellent. And this one will probably be the most controversial of all, but there is no place on this list for the Remarkable 2. It's an excellent device, of course, but it's been bumped by. In at number five is this, the Big Me B1 Pro Max Plus Color. So hold on one second because since filming this video, Big Me has bought this, which is the Ink Note to market. Everything that I'm going to say about the Big Me B1 actually is true for this as well except it does have some extra features. This has cameras, it has a fingerprint sensor, it's a smaller size and the pen doesn't need to be plugged in. It actually clips onto the side. So as I said, I'm gonna leave this here as a kind of placeholder for the Big Me Ink Note. Now the Big Me Ink Note is in fact cheaper than the B1 um, Pro Max Plus Color and I can't see any reasons not to buy the Ink Note over the B1. So given that this is cheaper, I would recommend this is the one to go for. It's currently in Kickstarter. I asked how come that price discrepancy, and they said, well, we're really trying to launch into Western markets with this, the Ink Note. It's co-branded with Goody Reader. It's got full English operating system. So watch this space for the full review of the Big Me Ink Note. That'll be coming soon. For now, here's the B1 Pro Max Plus color. Why does it beat the Remarkable? Well, it's currently one of the few 10.3 inch colored devices that you can buy. It is still an import, so I did have a lot of question marks about putting it in here, but it's in here for potential. And I'm pretty sure they're gonna bring this and other devices like it to market in the West pretty soon. Now, objectively, it is better than the Remarkable 2, but remember, it isn't cheap. I can, of course, report that it's a quality device. I am really getting along well with it. And yes, it's objectively better than the Remarkable 2, the bicolor front lights. You've got a pen with a Wacom stylus and it's got buttons which Bluetooth connect into the device to allow you to control it with page turns, rubber, a back button, all these useful things. Of course, the feature that really makes this so much different from the Remarkable is the Google Play Store. And having Google Play with color allows you to really get the most out of a lot more apps. The details I'm gonna bring are a standout feature for each device, some recommendations of who should actually buy each device, and then some pros and some cons. This isn't exhaustive, but on my new website, evaluateeverything.co.uk, I've got full reviews of each of these devices. So do head on over there if you want to read and taking this information at a bit more of a leisurely pace. So who should actually buy this device? Well, I think anyone involved in business, especially if you're involved in international business and you have to do any work with people in China. That's because of the standout features, those meeting minutes, 
and the translate function. It's using this array of microphones to pick up your voice and it's surprisingly accurate for picking up your voice and processing that into type text or to translate it. Pros, well, of course you've got that color ink screen. That really helps it along with the full Google Play here straight out of the box. It helps it to access a variety of apps a much wider variety than those devices that are using black and white screens. It's a really high spec tablet with everything that you'd expect from an Android tablet. It's great for reading, especially if you need color images or color figures or diagrams. This is the device to go for. If you know that you use color to organize your notes, then the Big B1 Pro Max Plus Color is a no brainer. The cons, well, currently the user interface still has some areas that are a bit lost in translation. So there are some times that you need to be prepared to make a workaround to access it and use it in the way that you want. But because you've got the access to the full Android, that's not very difficult. So yeah, the Big Me is in at number five. Now, possibly controversially, the Kobo Ellipse is in here at number four. It's one for the readers, and I know that you will love the advanced notebook feature. That's the standout feature. The advanced notebook means that you can start Word documents here on the device. And if you're somebody that needs to add formulas or diagrams or freeform drawings into your Word documents, then actually you're gonna get along really well with this device. Who should buy it? Well, anyone who's already using a Kobo for reading and who wants to add note-taking capability onto that same device. The biggest pro of the Kobo is actually the price. For a much smaller price tag than a lot of the other devices, you're gonna get the device, the case, and the stylus. And you're gonna get access to the full Kobo library and a device that's going to integrate really well with things like an add-on to the browser to send pocket articles to it and Dropbox integration as well. I love reading on the Kobo, it's an excellent device for that. There's a browser on here which you can directly pull web articles down into a much nicer, more readable format here for keeps on the device. The cons are, well, the case and the device are a little bit chunky if you're used to something a bit more slender. If you like your aesthetic tech, perhaps this isn't the one to go for you. Also, the pen, the stylus isn't the best. It does take a battery and that will one day run out. And occasionally there's a slight lagginess, especially if you're doing a lot of note taking. As I said, it's an excellent reader with note taking features. If you see it as that, a read first, note take second, then you won't be disappointed. If you primarily want a larger screen reader that will also give the option to make notes, this is the one for you. The Max Lumi 2, this is the one if you want a big screen. It's still the king of the A4 devices. Maybe if they do an air iteration of this, it could go to number one in a list like this. The standout feature, well, that's just the huge screen, isn't it? Use a Wacom pen. Huge screen with the Wacom pen input, it really does give you everything. Who should buy this? Anyone who needs to read full-size academic PDFs you'll feel right at home on here. Anyone who wants to take notes anywhere, who wants to work between multiple documents, who wants to work on any Android app, students, teachers, professionals, most people, if you know you want a big device, this is probably the one to go for. Pros, there are many. It's that huge screen. It's got the bicolor lights. Oh man, I haven't had this out recently. It's, it's excellent. <laughs> it also keeps its charge a lot longer than other ones gonna have to get back into this. It's a fantastic device. The Google Play is excellent and they've got well thought through apps in their own app store as well as many apps from Google Play which are actually optimized for the e-ink screen. And you can always take the time to optimize the screen for each app yourself. It's great for drawing, it's great for using the split screen mode, for presenting. So many things are great on this. It's great for recording your screen. You've got microphones and speakers on the device. It's a great all-rounder. Great battery life and lots of processing power and memory. It's a great device. And the cons, well, it's expensive and it's heavy, but it's not prohibitively so. Just let it do its latest update and have another play with that because that's excellent. We're down to the last two. If you've been working for the list and kind of eliminating things, you know we're down to pretty much the Supernote A5X and, well, the book's Note Air 2 Plus. It's really tough and I think it, it comes down to this new iteration. Is it better at enough across the whole spectrum of things that the book's Note Air 2 Plus can do compared to the really focused nature and the excellent use for writing of the Supernote. And I think it's gonna come down to this. It has caught up enough on the Supernote in terms of the writing that it has just overtaken the Supernote in terms of the overall package. So at number two is the Supernote A5X. This device is fantastic. It is for those who write. It's still an amazing tool 
for writers and for business people, professionals, for executives especially. But now the Note Air 2 Plus is almost as good for writers and professionals, but it's better for artists and developers readers and you know many more use cases. The Supernote A5X is a hugely desirable device and I would recommend it to anyone who wants this device to be a really focused place. The standout feature are the accessories, especially the pens, and really it's gonna sound funny, but the writing feel. I'm still stumped every single time I use that, how good and how close to premium ballpoint and paper that feels. If you simply want an e-ink tablet, which reminds you of those moleskin tablets that you used to love, that you feel like you just go into this focused zone when you pick up that pen and you write down your ideas, longer form prose or poetry, written work, articles, anything like that, this is the place for you. Who should buy it? Well, it's for the writers and anyone who wants quiet to focus on that written word and I don't think there's a better place that you can do this than the A5X. The pros are, well, the writing field is second to none. The accessories are excellent, and they've added apps they know that professionals will want to use. And they're continuing to add apps based on what they know their customers are asking for and want to use. And they're communicating in a way that's keeping them really as a favorite company of so many people. And even over lockdowns where there were so many pre-orders and they weren't able to fill those quickly enough, they didn't lose their customers because of the way they treated them, because of the way they kept updating them, and because of the final payoff, the wonderful package they got with a beautiful letter and gift which actually just shows what type of company they are. I love the way they're sharing their journey as they update things. And they've got a Trello, in fact, that you can follow along all of their updates as they progress through the development of them. They've made an incredibly balanced device between usability and functionality. You can have a calendar on here, email on here. The Word app is really good and the handwriting recognition works really well. The subjective is important when it comes to e-ink devices because objectively they aren't as good as LCD tablet. So it has to be something about the way you feel about using the device, the way you interact with it. And these are devices that people love for good reason. The cons, as a reader, it's a bit lacking. It doesn't have a light of any sort. There are very limited brushes that you can use, simply brush, fine liner or pen. And of course, even though it does run an Android operating system, you can't download the Google Play Store and so you can't have any app. And so there are limited different use cases for this. But for those who write, so the Note Air 2 and the Note Air 2 Plus, really, let's treat them as one device. Although it is the update to the Note Air 2 Plus, which has got this to the top of the list. Along with this release, they did also update the software and they've now got so many more things right. You can see my full review of the Note Air 2 here, and you can see that many of the criticism in there are now changed because of this software update. The standout feature is, well, <laughs> It's all the features. It's just a perfect all-rounder. They've really got something right this time. It's just, they've really got everything right this time. For instance, on the first Note Air 2, Trello had these funny lines around the words and it just didn't look as good. The handwriting recognition on the first Note Air 2 wasn't as reliable as it is now. And it didn't have this global handwriting input. It gets my even scruffiest handwriting almost every time now. This is now the device that I recommend most often to most people. So who should buy it? Most people. <laughs> that just tells you that it does the most for most people. And if you aren't sure which one you want because you don't know that you want a reader, so you aren't gonna go for the Kobo, and you don't know that you want something for drawing on, so you're not gonna go for the Remarkable, and you don't want something for writing, so you're not gonna go for the Supernote, this is the device for you because the writing's good on it, the reading's excellent on it, the drawing is good on it too because it's caught up with those devices in those use cases. For the pros, it's the whole package now. The Note Air 2 Plus brings the bigger battery, this magnetic case, the excellent styluses with excellent writing feel, this beautiful color and this lovely design, and of course, the pros of Google Play straight out of the box. And the fact that they've taken devices and automatically optimized them for the ink screen, it's really very useful. The reader is fantastic, and you can really adapt the way that you read larger academic PDF onto this smaller screen. That makes it a very versatile device for so many more people. And that means that you don't necessarily have to go all the way to the A4 screen if you need to read academic or professional PDF. Oh, now, I wouldn't call it an intuitive device, but the thing about it is, is every time you think, oh, I wish there was a way to do that, normally there is a way. The cons, well, you need to expect to take your time to learn all of the different features, all the different ins and outs of using this device. You just need to accept that that's part of having all the features is it being a bit more complicated to use. And well, aside from that, I mean, the only thing is that as it's smaller, using split screen mode is not quite as good as it is on the larger device. I was surprised too, but the more I thought about this, the Note Air 2 is currently the best e-ink tablet 
the best note taker that you can buy right now in 2022. Watch this space because this is the second device in the Note Air 2 series. What's coming next books? I can't wait to find out. I hope that was useful. As usual, there's links in the description and links, of course, to my new website, evaluateeverything.co.uk, where you will find written reviews and comparisons of all these. Here's a e-ink tablet buying guide that might just help confirm whichever one you felt you were leaning towards in this video. And here's a detailed comparison of the top four 10.3 inch e-ink tablets. Thanks for watching.